How would you like to save a ton of money on fishing tackle this holiday season? If you join the Fishing the DMV Patreon, you'll receive 5% off all of your orders to Jake's Bait and Tackle. That's 5% off all your orders every single month. For $6 a month, which is less than a pack of Cinco's or a jackhammer chatterbait, you'll be a part of the Fishing the DMV community where you'll receive 5% off all of your orders to Jake's Bait and Tackle. You will also gain access to our private Facebook group community, entered to win weekly prize giveaways with the winner being announced during Monday Night Live, have access to members-only live streams and video content, we will be doing monthly competitions and so much more. And you'll be a part of a community that's striving to create our own nonprofit to help our local fisheries. For $6 a month, you're going to be receiving 5% off all of your orders to Jake's Bait and Tackle, whether online or in person. For more information, check out the link in the episode description down below. Thank you so much. You're listening to Fishing the DMV with your host, Thomas Ahrens. Fishing the DMV is brought to you by Jake's Bait and Tackle located in Winchester, Virginia. If that doesn't get you jacked up, I don't know what will. Good evening, everybody. How's everybody doing tonight on Mon- or Monday Night Live? Yeah, as you can tell, I am recovering from the flu and the sickness. Uh, I'm feeling a lot better than I was Monday and Tuesday. I was on my ass. I slept until like 7 p.m. on Monday, and then I basically fell asleep again. I didn't wake up till like Tuesday afternoon. I was on my butt. So feeling a lot better, not 100%, but I'm feeling much better. Uh, hopefully everyone can hear me okay out there. Please give me a mic check how I sound, um, if people can hear me or not. A thumb up, thumb down would be wonderful before we get going here. And then without further ado, I'm going to bring in my special guest. And so hopefully everyone can hear me okay. Uh, here we go. We got Jeff is in the house. How are you doing tonight, sir? Hey, pretty good, man. How about you? I'm doing pretty well. Um, better than Other I was. Than being sick. Yeah, I was. Uh, I had a 103 degree fever for about a day and a half. So mm-hmm. I was. Uh, it, it was. I, I. I don't get sick usually, but when I get sick, I try to go all in and get insanely sick. Oh really? So yeah, I don't. I don't do anything halfway. That's uh, good. And we got so interesting here. We have John Mule says we have sound. And we have Warren Johnson saying we don't have sound. This is quite an interesting predicament here. Hey, Warren, turn your turn your volume on. I can hear you both great. Okay, cool. So sound like it could just be that. And then on the replay, guys, don't worry about it. I'll adjust. I'll just I'll adjust everything there as well. Well, we we've, we've been catching some pretty big fish. Not just me. The people have been going out with me. But that's the one that you showed me. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm not gonna. I'll just show pictures of me. I'm not gonna show pictures of other people because I don't know if they want want to want you to see that or not. Just black out their face or blur it out or whatever you do. <laughs> Put a clown face on it. I'm just saying, let's see if one of your clients catches a 15 pound smallmouth. Something insane. Cut That'd be sweet. Out. We got to see the fish. That'd be sweet. Here we go. Hey, did All you right. pull it up? Yeah, I got it up. I'm gonna I'm gonna show this thing right now. Hey, has anyone out there been getting some type of uh, bullshit uh, uh, message on Facebook saying that? That they're gonna cancel your um, your your page because you broke their rules. Yeah, ignore it. It's just it's hot. a scam, right? Yeah, that like, sucker. Hey, that sucker was caught on uh, um, the uh, my finesse jig head and uh, the um, Z Man TRD. I'm catching them with that Canada Craw color. You got you got that color available? Yeah, I do. I got it available. All right. Show it off to the cameras. All right, let me get let me get one. Hold on. And then we're going to be also talking about um, he's not making uh, biscuits and gravy. He's actually pouring his own lead. Yeah, uh, your your John Mule, your volume is much lower. I have, I have a couple. I have some orders I have to fill. I think you said the one name of one guy on there. I think that's the order that I'm filling right now. I'm gonna send it out tomorrow. John Mule. I'm not sure. I I can't go on my um. If, if I click off of your uh, live stream, I'd have to log back in. So here. Just the old Ned rig. Can oh, see it? wow. Yeah. Little Canada crawl action right there. Oh, that's really cool. Yeah. 
but I've been catching them on Green Pumpkin too. But this seems to be working right now. This this profile, this um, just the net break. Um, on a um, 16th or 332nd head, uh, the, the, you know, depending on the current. And yeah, the, the smallmouth are in current. They were. Just a little how bit. Big, how big was that one that you ended up sticking? Just over five pounds. I'll bring that picture back up on the screen here. And then we're going to get into, into real sauce. Five pounds. Guys, winter is coming. This is an absolute donkey. Um, I'm still thinking Jeff or somebody in your group is going to catch a seven plus pounder easily. I think that's happening this this winter. I think there's um I think the Potomac River is harboring a seven pounder somewhere. Oh, easily. Easily, dude. Um historically, uh there has been people that have caught seven pound smallmouth on the upper Potomac River. Really? Yeah. Now the audience is dying to know what are you working on right now? Jig heads, man. Those those finesse jig heads. These how do, you, how do you do that? Right here. Can you see it? Yeah. Hold on. Holy cow. Right there. I'm just pouring them with lead. Hold on. Can you see it? Watch my uh my light on top of my camera will go in the wall in the lead. Oh, that's Can you cool. See it? Yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. Where do you get the lead from? Um, I shall not name my source. No, I get it from uh just friends. People that have, um, I use uh, any type of lead I can get a hold of, and then I um, melt it down, and uh, all the impurities go to the go to the top, and you just scoop them out. Why lead? It's just the easiest to work with. Mm. It's the easiest to work with. And then I gotta um I'm gonna paint these uh tonight too. Now all this stuff that I'm doing, I call it guide quality. I'm not going crazy with this stuff and doing all kinds of bacon, bacon jig heads and stuff like that. Um, this is so I can get this stuff done quick. And that's how I make my jig heads, that's how I sell them, that's how I sell my baits. They're just guide quality baits. They're good baits. I mean, they catch fish, so. Um, I'd rather be guiding than making baits. You know what I'm saying? That's really cool. H how many come in that mold? Six. Six do. And does the mold base, I don't know anything about this, so this is new for me too. Is that mold set for a certain weight? So when you pour it in there, you know you're getting a one eighth ounce or whatever. Yeah. Yep. I got 332nd, an eighth, and I have, I'm sorry, 116, 332nd, and an eighth that I'm working on right now. Hmm. That's interesting. Yeah. I, I, for a guide or someone like that that's always in the water, I mean, you really can't beat making your own jig heads. Because how many of those do you think you lose in a year, honestly? Oh, probably hundreds, man. <laughs> I'm serious. I mean, on a trip, I'll lose a dozen. Depends on who's fishing with me. Could you imagine if you had to pay, like, um, I mean, some of the stuff I buy at the Japanese tackle where it's $10 for, like, three hooks. Like, you you guys would go out of business if you didn't start I mean, some people feel bad, but, I mean, that's just the, that's just what happens when you take people fishing. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, I call, man, I lost another one of your jig heads. I'm like, don't worry about it. <laughs> so. If you had to have one type of jig head this time, what would it be? One type of jig head, probably be a. Um, I mean, and that's all I could use on you any get, of the plastics. You get one, probably the ball head jig, mm -hmm. because you could put that in tubes, and then you could. It would have to be exposed, though. You know, like when you're doing um, these um, uh, net rigs and all these other small baits, you'd have to expose the hook. But it would probably be a ball head jig. I'd probably go with a ball held jig versus the mushroom. I, I just, I've never been a fan of that mushroom style head for a Ned rig. I feel like it just gets snagged so freaking much compared to like, you know, uh, you know what the, you know what the head's doing? They're not necessarily getting snagged. 
they're getting um they're getting wedged. They get wedged in the rocks. Snag wedged. I wonder if yeah, that's why you don't want to um use heavy weight. You want to use the least amount of weight as possible to um well uh the least amount of weight that's um effective. I wonder if I even have one here. I mean, this one's actually, this is a Nichols lure. This one's actually, this is old school, guys. Nichols lure. This is a, uh, this is a little bit better jig head right here, but it's that mushroom shape, but at least you get a little bit of a weed guard. But I still think with that mushroom shape there, as you said, it's it wedged very easily. I mean, I have other jig heads too. I've got Z-Man, um, Z-Man type jig heads. Those are deadly effective. And I'm, I'm going to have a, um. Here, let me show you one of the Z-Man jig heads, and I'm going to show you what I'll have available this winter. Hold on. Yeah, I mean, wintertime fishing is here, and we're getting the rain, too. I was just talking um, on Patreon a little bit while ago about, like, how the water's actually coming up, getting the good flow back on all of our river systems, Shenandoah, Susquehanna, the Upper Potomac, and that's really boding well for a fantastic wintertime fishing. I think we need a little bit more rain to get everything just dialed in just right, but still. Hey, the Potomac River's losing water like like it's got a hole in it. Mm. So I'll have a jig head that's similar to this. It's basically the same thing. Um, but I, I like I like the hook. It'll be on like an Aberdeen hook. But see these? See oh, the wow. way those they're set up? Yeah. It's going to be just like these. Hmm. Um, I, I think they'll work better. And then again, pinch those with super glue. I definitely feel like super glue is important for those type of hooks just because it'll Yeah, super glue is a good thing. I'll tell you another thing that's good is smelly jelly for scent in the wintertime. Dude, you're giving away all your secrets. Good Lord. It gives Stop. a little bit of, hey, it gives a little bit of, um, it gives a little bit of, a little bit of something extra. I believe if that fish swims up to it and he's kind of looking at it, I think if uh, if that scent's blown in the breeze, you know, so to speak, in his face, he'll probably be more uh, more likely to uh, decide on just taking a bite than just looking at it and just swimming away. Personally, I still like my Baku. Uh, I still think that is a, a really good one. But oh, you mean scent? Yeah, scent wise. Yeah, well, in any any type of scent. I I, I use that. Um, that smelly jelly, but yeah, any of that stuff would probably work. Oh, I, I like smelly jelly too. I mean, I, I've, I remember as a kid in high school, I used to use smelly jelly all the time because that was something, um, Penrod, Penrod used to talk about all the time in his articles. Is you should use smelly jelly if you're going to use scent any time of the year, it should be in the winter because that's when they're, um, they're, uh, very uh slow to uh react really and then we got yeah, to decide whether or not they take your bait sometimes i i believe this is also true we've got some comments here with the comment section hey, and for anyone that wants to know oh, we'll, we'll, we'll get to the uh the river report i was on the river today it was uh it was a cold one yeah we're gonna get that in a minute but we got a so clifton bennett said um clifton bennett here and i have i have up on my uh my other screen guys are private Facebook page. So if you're watching, you can watch on Facebook and you can also watch with the unlisted. Uh, YouTube. You can click on that and you can watch it on YouTube. But Cliff Bennett said, I rub smelly jelly on my jerk bait. That's a yeah. power move. We don't talk about that a lot about using scent on hard baits, which is. Yeah, that's a good thing. Probably I put is. it on jerk baits, swim baits, spy baits. You can put it on anything. Yeah. Oh, here we go. Greg, Greg. Has a great question here. How clear is the river right now? And then Greg, hey, thanks so much for messaging me. I'm feeling a lot better. I really appreciate you sending out all the love and the good vibes. I really Hey, what's Greg's uh what who's Greg? What is who is Greg? Yeah, what what's his last name? Greg Horning. Yeah, what's up, Greg? I'm and Greg, of Greg wants to know uh how clear is the river? It's stained. It's it's got um like a green color. Hmm. But it's but it's uh it's it's got a really um, heavy green stain to it. Let's get let's get right into it then with the fishing report for the Upper Potomac right now. Um, we've gotten a lot more rain than we did in the beginning of November. 
Yep. We're supposed to get more Friday, too. We'll, we'll see if that happens. Is the river at that perfect level that you want to see it at? It was. <laughs> it's not now. It's how, getting how, low. How much rain do you think I'll, 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 I'll tell you this, too. If, if you're going to fish out there on the river, and um, everything I do is based around safety because I take people out fishing. Um, if the water's warmer, it's one thing to go out when the water's real low. And, and if something happens, so be it. I can get out and um, push the boat or get it off rocks or something like that. But if the, if the water's 39 degrees and it's low like it was in um, uh, early November, um, it's, it's, it's unsafe to run on the river. For, for, for people wondering about um, safety. Well, let's just say that one more time uh, just to make sure we everyone understands that. What, what is the best, what is the safest water level to run at on a jet boat? I think if you're talking just safety, um, here, like on the, on the, um, Potomac. Yeah. Um, probably, uh, somewhere around six feet. Six at feet. Edwards Ferry's gauge. Some people be like, oh, the water's going to be brown or dirt. You know, it, it depends on, it depends on how high the water got. But if you want to run and catch fish, probably six feet at Edwards Ferry gauge. So, so that, that would put a uh, point of rock somewhere around four feet. And what is it at right now? It's at three, three something. Damn. I That's mean, nice. it's falling out like someone poked a hole in it, man. I mean, you kayakers, man. I mean, I mean, at least you guys can get out there. But yeah, I mean, that's a big time thing is with the safety. Um, how much rain do we need consistently, you think, to get this river back up there to that safe threshold? Well, it, it depends on, um, I mean, it would have to rain regularly to keep it, you know, keep it up higher. I, I don't even know that question. I think, I think um, someone, uh, a customer pointed it out to me uh, yesterday when I was talking to him. He thinks we would need snow, quite a bit of snow to keep the river up for a while because that snow would soak into the ground. That's actually a really good idea. I, I, that's a brilliant thought. Yeah. And that's what happens a lot of times with um, those Western fisheries too, is when you have those good snowfalls in the wintertime. It but helps. the problem with that is, is obviously it makes the water really cold. Just like what, just like what's happened today. When I got out there to, today, the water water temperature was thirty six degrees. But you can and still. I, I two think days ago, right well, you can catch fish in thirty. You can catch smallmouth in thirty six degree weather, but our water. But it depends on how it got to thirty six degrees. And I, um, I think we did that really well. Like you and I went out last year, and it was cold as snot. Yeah, it was cold. It wasn't thirty. The thirty six degrees is a. Uh, uh, you're, you're getting to a threshold to where. Uh, the, the fish are just very, very, very lethargic. But um, it was two days ago, it was 40, um, 42 degrees. That's a huge drop in 48 hours. You know? What do you think, what do you think that number is, just in, in your opinion, where those fish shut off completely? Uh, somewhere around 35 and, 30, 35 and below. I think it I think your percentages of catching fish go down tremendously. I still think, and this is, you know, guys, let me know in the comment section down below. I still think a small a river smallmouth will still bite more aggressively than a large mouth of the same size in a lake system. I just feel like the bite that they're because they still have that thought process. They're in a river system. If they're gonna eat, they have to take it. Versus hey, this time of year on the upper Potomac River, you can catch you know, if you have high water, you can catch real big largemouth. And, um, they, dude, I, I don't know where they come from because they're so few and far between, but you can catch them. And, uh, yeah, when they bite, um, it's super, super light. It's the, the smallmouth. You, you can almost tell when you get that bite. You're like, it's probably a largemouth. You know, it depends on where you are on the river. If you're near, like, a creek mouth and you get a bite like that, you probably – it's probably going to be a large mouth. Now, I mean, I mean, let's really get into it then. So, with we we, we already covered the water levels. We got the water temperatures dialed in. You're still having insane success right now. Um, we already showed off one of the major fish catches. What other you know, you've been catching consistently big fish across the board lately? What'd you say? Say that again. You've been catching some good ones consistently. 
Yeah. Um, three days ago, we caught three fish that were uh, right around 20 pounds. I mean, I'm sorry, 20 inches. Holy God. One, one was 21. Three fish for 20 pounds. Damn, boy. Yeah, no, it's, it, that's for real. That's, um, and then the other ones were uh, 16, 15s. Um, we caught quite a few fish that day. Yeah, Greg coming in with a really good question. With the water being stained, are you using baits other than a Ned rig? Oh, yeah, you throw, um, you could throw them, um, uh, I just think those Z-Man baits work real well, but I, I also, I have plastics as well, plastisol type baits that I have. Um, any type of, um, a tube, two or three quarter inch tube, green, green pumpkin or a brown will work in any color and green pumpkin or a brown color uh, tube will work right now. Um, and small creature baits like, uh, Z-Man has this bait called a baby goat. You ever seen that? Mm -mm. It's out uh, here. Let me get it. Hold on. I love guys with, with Jeff. Um, he has a fantastic shop. Uh, we're going to be doing over the winter time. We're going to do a live from his shop to really pimp it out. But he has all the baits, all the tackle. He can fix anything on the planet. Yeah, dude. I even have, um, like I said, I got that. Um, I have a TIG welder now. And I also just uh, acquired a, uh, a hoist. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> if he's if needed. Yeah, you're basically a one-stop mechanic. I'm trying to be. So here, here's what here's what these baits look like. Can you guys see them? Oh, okay. It's like a biffle bug almost. Yeah, that's two or three quarter inches big. I could I would consider this a uh like a uh, uh a net rig as well. I don't know if some people classify uh creature baits as net rigs, but that's that's what I would consider this. Jeff Little uh, was talking about a comment section on somebody's Facebook. I forget right now. Uh -huh. but, uh, Jeff Little was talking about that this time of year, he likes to downsize. Is that something that you see yourself doing? Do you downsize or do you upsize your presentation? Yeah, no. Yeah, he's um, yeah, man. Uh, two and three quarter inch tubes, two and three quarter inch anything, maybe even two and a half or two inch. Yeah. You know, those uh, those micro baits you can get a hold of these days. You got some of those, don't you? Yeah, micro baits. Those are those are definitely worth trying. Dude, I don't even know. Especially if you pull up into a hole and you catch one. And uh, you know there's a fish there. There's probably other fish in, in this type of weather. Try that bait. You might actually get a little bit more action with it. Man, here, nasal spray that I've been been killing lately guys that's the uh just a size comparison nasal spray micro ned brig it's like insanely tiny here we go sharpie has anyone ever seen a thousand hooks here's a thousand hooks oh my god <laughs> how, how much does that cost just spitball a couple hundred bucks oh that's not bad I mean, honestly, if I wasn't married and I could have a garage like that, um, I would totally probably make some of my own hooks. I probably would save a lot of money in the long run. Oh, man, I'm already thinking about how how I can heat this bad boy. Now, you're going to have to insulate the garage, though, too. Yeah, well, you know, I mean, I'm not trying to heat it and sustain the heat in here. Um, but you, you're right. If, I, I wish it would have been um, uh, insulated. But um, I even thought about a wood wood burning stove. In the garage. Dude, I'm, listen, you do that. We get some spray foam insulation. You already have the TV. All we need is a surround sound, and we have the Super Bowl at your place. Dude, I got a, uh, I've got a DVD player in here that I play all kinds of uh, stupid like hunting videos on and stuff while I'm in here and fishing shows. And it's a five disc changer. It's sweet. Uh, speaking Old of school. Speaking of hunting, how's that gone this year? Oh, it's going pretty good. I haven't gotten any monsters or anything like that, but I normally don't, man. I'm not, I'm not what you would call a, um, you know, like a trophy hunter. Uh, I just enjoy hunting. And if I get the opportunity to get something big, um, you know, I, I take advantage of it, but, uh, usually I'm just, uh, you know, I get does and small bucks a lot of the times. 
So are you looking just for does to fill up the, the freezer? Are you looking? Yeah. Yep. Yep. Oh, I'll tell you what, I just made two people probably know this. Uh, there's probably some people that are watching that know this recipe, but man, I just tried something, you know, getting off the top of the fishing, but I just tried something recently where you, you take these uh, square pieces, you know, on your deer. Cause I, I, uh, I process the deer myself, but you, you take like, um, certain a certain cut on the deer and cut it up and make it into square pieces um you know like uh let's see like you know something like this big and then you take a um uh a meat tenderizer and beat it out beat it down you know and get it bigger yeah make it thinner and you know flatten it out then you take um some um like one or two onions you know like um uh cuts of onion you put um, cream cheese in it, a jalapeno pepper. Dude. You roll it up. But. Then you take a piece of bacon and roll the bacon around it and shove a toothpick through it to keep it together. And then you grill it. And you grill it um, until the bacon is done. Because, you, you know, um, deer meat tastes best when it's, when it's rare or medium rare. That sounds really good. <laughs> I mean, hey, it... it I had it. I'm like, oh my gosh, this, this doesn't even, I mean, you, you can't even taste that. It's some type of venison or wild game. It's incredible. I mean, you could probably do it with, um, uh, beef too. It probably tastes delicious with, um, some type of like flank steak from a butcher or something. Cheap, cheap steak at the grocery store. Dude, I, I really do like deer. Um, it's just a shame with, you know, hunting and everything. It's, almost becoming a rich man's sport in the sense that unless you have land, it's hard to get involved in that. And I was really thinking about that. I think hunting is hundred percent the rich man's sport, but I think sad fishing is going that way too. Um, and I'm not just talking about forward facing sonar and all that crap. I just meant like you need water access and if you don't have, to have water access. It really kind of puts you out of it. There's not a lot of bank access. Anymore. Well, I'll tell you, there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of land. I mean, you got to put some work into it though. But there's a lot of land, and there's some places I got my eye on um, for, you know, it's gun season right now in Maryland. And, you know, as, as the gun season goes on, um, the deer just become a lot more scarce. You know, they're hiding. They're, they're just not – they're not out and about like they normally are because they're getting shot at, right? So – but uh, if you put some time in on some of this public land that's around the river and stuff, man, there's all kinds of opportunities on public land. I, I know it's public land and uh, – I'm talking about gun season, but, you know, if you go out the second end of the second week or something and put a day or two in, you have a pretty good chance of getting a deer. Didn't we talk about on an old episode last year about you doing like a, a fish and shoot or something like that? that like that would yeah, be a cool yeah, idea. You, um, they have a, they have a, um, I don't know if goose season's in right now. It might be. Um, that would be pretty cool though. I have to, I have to check, but yeah, no, you can go out. And you can fish on the Potomac River, and while you're fishing, if, if it's goose season, um, even if it's water, just waterfowl season in general, but goose season, and you can uh, you can take your shotgun with you and shoot them from the boat. We got uh, Cliff Bennett said uh, Harris Island. Hey, isn't that um, private? Uh, apparently not. Or I don't know. Harrison, maybe. Hey, does he mean Harrison Island? Yes, I can't. I can't. Speak yeah, Harrison Island. Yeah, I, th I thought that was still private. Does he know if it's not? Uh, I don't know. I don't know if you want to give away a secret. Uh, if, because uh, I don't see anyone on. That's why I'm asking. Well, if, if it's not if it's not private, it's public. That is so true. It's either one or the other. Um, we got Greg. Greg's got two questions here. He said, "Call it cast and blast." I absolutely love that idea. Yeah, that's what they call it. Uh, and then Cliff said, I thought it was too. cast and blast. I love that. And then, um, Greg wanted to, wanted to steer us back into fishing here. Uh, are you finding the fish on the sunny banks, eddies, or in the middle around rocks right now? You're going to find them. Uh, well, it's cold now. I mean, the game, the game's completely changed, but you're going to find them in slow moving current. The water's so low that, I mean, certain eddies and stuff, they might be sitting in, but I would focus out in the river and start in real slow moving water first because that's where they just were two days ago. Uh, and then, and then also focus on eddies, shoreline eddies and middle of the river eddies that have some depth to them, you know, three or four feet. 
this is honestly, and we'll, we'll do uh, later on, guys, we'll probably do a full in-depth breakdown, but this is my favorite time of year to get out on the water, whether it's lakes, rivers, uh, especially smallmouth fishing. This is my favorite time. I go out with Jeff Green and Travis every winter. Um, it, it's so easy in one sense because you know where the fish are going to be. It's kind of obvious places. <laughs> And you just specifically target those areas and milk them. And then you go to the next one. And every time you lean back into one, it's nice. You don't catch dinks this time of year. Um, yeah, no, the opportunity for catching a fish of a lifetime is uh, very, very, very good. You and I went out last year so around this time, and we had five bites. But we had close. We had almost 20 pounds with the five. that. Yeah. We had. Um, and that's 20 pounds. In Didn't most... we, get, we had to leave early, too, because wasn't the wind picking up or something? Yeah, it was starting to sleet. Yeah, we got the heck out of there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But and remember, there was that guy that like was like asking where we came from because he was like hunting ducks or something. Oh, yeah. Remember, he was. <laughs> yeah, that was up by um, Peter's Island. Remember that? Yeah. Like that was just like he just kept he kept circling us the whole time with his gun. It's like this is a little sketch. <laughs> yeah, man. They just come out of the woodwork. Oh, my goodness. Three. I tell you. But, yeah, the point is, first off, guys, you've got to book a trip. with. you got to go book a trip with Jeff. This is the time of year to get out there. Pick your days. You do have to pick your days. Not every day works, but you can absolutely have the best day of your life out there. And plus, if you're not one of those guys that wants to get up at 2 a.m., this is the best time because it doesn't get dark. It doesn't get light out till like, 7-ish. Yeah, so now I'm doing trips. They're going to be all-day trips, and I start at 10 a.m. That's brilliant. So for you college guys and high school guys, best time of year still. Um, ah, I love it. I love this time of year. Hopefully I get healthy enough. I can get back out there. Um, I had a thought. What was my thought? Oh, yeah. So I just want to ask one more question about the deer hunting thing. Are you just rifle or do you do bow as well? I do bow. I do bow too. What kind of bow do you got? No, I do crossbow. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Technically, still counts. Get you out there. Some right people here. say it does. Some people say it doesn't. Um, uh, what rifle are you using? Uh, it depends, man. It, um, I got I got quite a few, but um, I got like a three. I, I got. I'll shoot like a three hundred Savage. If any know anyone knows what that is, mm -hmm. I'll shoot a um, thirty thirty. Everyone probably knows what that is at deer hunts. Um, I got a thirty out six. Um, what else do I have? I have some other ones. I got a uh, seven millimeter mag. That's a little heavy at times, but Jesus. But uh, that's a that's a pretty. Uh, I use that for years. I mean, I wasn't tearing the deer up any more than um, anyone else was with like a thirty out six. But uh, you know, guns like that, like two seventies and stuff. And yeah. then um, yeah. around here, I like using twelve gauge slugs. I was gonna say, like, I feel like a seven millimeter around here. You just don't have the distances you have to reach for that. Like the slug well, makes yeah. sense. Yeah, the um, well, uh, where I live in Maryland, you can you can use a rifle, um, gotcha. but down on the river on the Potomac, you would have to take your, your your shotgun. And then they have these other new guns out too, like 350 Legends or something they're called. You, that's, that's a round, hmm. and I guess it kind of looks like a 30 30. Interesting. We yeah. can go down a rabbit hole that stuff, but. Yeah, uh, I, I I digress, and uh, I know guys. I know we're getting back into the fishing. I just had to, I had to uh, clinch that uh, that thirst. I had to know that. Stuff. Well, hey, look on the, on the fishing too. When you're out there fishing, I would use um, use uh, keep using like fluorocarbon leaders with with um, definitely have braid on there because you want to feel these fish because it's the slightest little tick when you get water that's 39, 40 degrees. I 100 percent agree, and then. Um, Cliff Bennett said, I caught 18 pounds last Thursday. Like you're getting there. And then I also think, you know, have your finesse setups all set up eight pound test, you know, six, what have you. Um, I did a video last year, this time talking about BFS, you know, bait caster finesse and basically get yourself a medium light bait caster or something like that. And you can go with 12 or 14 pound fluorocarbon as your main line. And what's nice about that is you can bump up your jig head size a little bit. And you can start whacking when you feel anything different. And if you set it into a tree or whatever, you don't have to break off necessarily every single time. Um, I like to have both setups going because sometimes you just got to go with eight pound tests and the super light stuff. But 
on the days you can get away with it, I don't lose as much tackle when I use that BFS stuff and I use that jig, that Ned rig head on a little bit heavier tackle. Um, yeah, the um, the uh, another thing you can go with is um, especially if you're like on the Susquehanna, the water's usually moving pretty fast, and since it's a winter time and the fish seem to be bigger, the ones you catch, you know, on average, um, you could you could stay with a medium medium rod and i would go up in size on your line on your leader i'd go to like a 10 pound i think that you know like 10 pound or 12 pound fluorocarbon mm -hmm. it depends I on do. your situation and where you are and um you know how swift that water is that they're going to end up in when you hook them like like in um once we get really into winter and you're you're catching them in eddies and you're on the outside of the eddy on a boat or, or whatever what, whatever you might be on or in and um, that'll help you get them in, and, and then they're not going to end up snapping your line or something like that. I mean, you got to have a good drag. You, you got to got to set your drag um, so that when you when you go to set the hook on one of these fish, you can hear it. And and when in doubt, I think this is what gets people uh, in trouble this time of year. When in doubt, set the hook. Yeah, um, it, it's gonna be. I was uh, the other day. You guys have probably saw the picture on my Facebook. I caught a almost two pound crappie, um, doing a little Demiki rig action on Lake Frederick, and it felt like a leaf. It just felt like a leaf, and I pulled up, and there was weight there. A lot of times, the big smallmouth, a big crappie, a big largemouth, it it's so awesome as a sport where that thing can be so big. And it can take a bait so freaking subtly. Or yeah. when I was fishing that Demiki rig, I was fishing, you know, I was Demiki rigging a bait probably no bigger than this little micro Ned rig here. And that that stupid fish would come up and they would bite just the tip of that bait and hold it for a second and not even get the big hook. And I'm just still blown away how those fish are so intelligent that they can do that. And with all that saying is when you're throwing that tube or that or that Ned rig or or bucktail jig and you get on the bottom and you feel like you have a leaf you got to hammer home you just you have to uh, uh, just i like to do a this is my favorite hook set when i'm dealing with a bait caster i like to do a double tap i do a quick little tap to see if it's a fish and if there's weight i'll hit him again um that way if it is a log i didn't just auger a gerald swindle slackline hook set into it so just a short little thing like you're doing a drop shot and then if it's actually a fish, you can hit them one more time to make sure you got that hook in there. Just a quick pop pop. Um, and that's something that I've learned over the years. And it's worked for me, for better or worse. Yeah. Um, Susquehanna River. Right now, you said it, the water is moving really fast. How's that place fishing right it's now? It's always moving. It always seems like it's moving fast. The Susquehanna at the Harrisburg gauge is somewhere around four four feet. Or no. No, over four and a half feet. And um, those fish are probably, uh, you'll probably catch those fish real close to the eddies. So something I, really, eddy. something I really want to try is a float and fly on the river. Yeah, I, I know what you're talking about. I like, I've heard of it on all these lakes and I've, I've Demiki rigged so much this year now that I had forward facing sonar, you know, full disclosure. But I've done it on the Upper Potomac at Big Slack. I've done it at Lake Frederick. I'm doing it everywhere just to try to really learn this technique this winter. Um, and basically, Demiki rigging is floating in a float and fly without the float. The smallmouth will absolutely love where you have that bait and it just floats right past their face. And I wonder if there's some way you could do the float and fly on the river to where you can just get that thing set at a distance to where it's not going to hit every riffle, but you could just float it past them. I wonder how successful that would be. I don't know. I've, um, it's supposed to catch fish in cold water, isn't it? Yeah, it's supposed to be very deadly. That rig. Um, I don't know. Just something interesting that I'm gonna I'm gonna try to play around with this guy this uh, this winter, and I can let you guys know about it. Uh, and the other thing is bucktail jigs, like little bucktail jigs. I need to get better at. I've just have never fished a lot of them before. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. They um. Those hair jigs, I'm going to tell you what, man. There's some people that are just straight up killing with hair jigs, man. Just straight up beat these fish up with hair jigs. Is there a specific type of hair that works better, like Malibu or Buck versus Doe or Skunk? Um, some people use like rabbit hair. There's so many different types, man. It would, 
it, it's it's probably personal preference, I would say, more than anything. Sell some Jeff hair jigs. Yeah. Um, yeah, and then some people use like uh bucktail uh type uh material, marab marabou. People use That's all kinds of nice. stuff. You know. And I, I would imagine not one um, you know, uh all of them catch catch smallmouth. You know? What is, is there any moving baits that you like to throw this time of year on the river? Yeah, jerk, just uh, suspending jerk baits is a, a big one. That's probably it. That's usually what what I throw. Suspending jerk bait. Suspending jerk bait's a good one. I'll go with the spy bait. I'll add that in there, of course. That's basically on brand now. I have both tied on though. So uh, when one doesn't work, I go with the other one. Um, yeah. You know, I've never used a spy bait, man. Dude. Come on. Where you been, man? I'll hook you up. Show me. I got about a thousand of them. Yeah, you'll have to show me. What's the, so what's what's the idea behind the spy bait? It's uh it's basically so men could take their wives fishing. Um no, it, it it's the the way it's shaped and with the props on there, when you reel it in, it just does a very tight shimmy action. Uh-huh. Um, and then it's got treble hooks. So think of a swim bait with treble hooks. You just reel it back in slowly depending on the depth you're in. And when those fish come up there, they're just going to load up on it. It's not violent. The action's not violent. It's just that tight shimmy. Oh, and well, uh, another good bait to have out there this time of year is a paddle tail swim bait. Yep. Somewhere, somewhere between um, two and a half and three inches long, or four inches long, depending on where you are and what they like. Now are you are you bottom bumping that thing or are you burning it yeah. back mid range? No, no, no. You're uh bumping it off the bottom. Yeah, and, and that's something probably I... letting it lay there, and then that tail just ever so slightly moves. And this is actually one of the heads that I like to use, guys, for that is you can and this is a little bit bigger one. This is for my, my large mouth, but you get your uh your EWG screw lock head in there. Um, do not get one with the weight here. This is all I had for demonstration purposes. And then get yourself a weight hooked up there, Tokyo rig style, like that. And what will happen is this thing will just absolutely stay locked to the bottom, but then this thing will be moving free. So it, it's basically like a um, scround, uh, not scrounger head, a, uh, a, a biffle rig. Hey, how about the, um, how about the uh, bladed blade baits? You love blade baits, don't you? Greg, uh, would a blade bait work on the Upper Potomac? So, <coughs> yes. I think I love blade baits. I threw a blade bait with you, and then we caught one. Um, yeah. I like I like the Domeki Vault, and I like also the, the Jackal Tail Spinner because it has a little blade in the back. My setup, I needed to do a full breakdown. I have all my blade stuff in the boat. <laughs> but um, <clears throat> for my blade baits, this is my setup. This is what I like. You don't have to do this. You want to switch your hooks out to finesse treble hooks. That way, there's a couple of purposes here. One is they're sticky sharp. Two, you can break them off. Then what I think you should do is you need to get a spinning rod, and you're going to load that thing up with 20-pound braid. So here's why. An issue, I think, with blade bait fishing, you pull that thing way too far off the bottom. As soon as you feel it engage with that with that vibration, you need to kill it. It's supposed to be really tight hops. I think going straight braid gives you the ability as soon as you feel it pump, you can stop it. But what's also nice is with going straight braid is you can pull that thing and you can pull a log, a rock, you can pull almost everything back to the boat or you bend up the hook and get your bait back. If you're going with just like eight pound test fluorocarbon, you're going to lose so many blade baits. Um, that's kind of like the setup that I kind of enjoy with it. Um, and then don't cast it too far. Short cast. Longer the cast you make with that thing, generically speaking, you have a higher chance of snagging it because of the angle in which you're bringing it back. But if you have short little casts and you move it, you're not going to get hung up as much. Um, but again, it's just short little pops. And, oh, the last piece of advice, and I mentioned this last year, the fish I caught with Jeff on the blade bait, I was we were working a big eddy. And I threw it in there and I worked it. As I was reeling it back to the boat, one shot up and was sharking it. Because I had spinning gear, I just 
pop the bale and let it drop and he hit it going back down to the bottom. That's another reason I like having spinning gear is a lot of times those fish will chase it back to the boat when you finish your cast and you can just pop the bale and let it go back down and they'll hit it. So yeah. blade baits, uh, it, it, no one fishes them, but they can be very, very effective. They catch all kinds of fish. Oh, dude, catfish, carp. Yeah, um, catch, somehow they catch everything. Trap bags. Yeah. So, dude, I mean, I appreciate you coming on the show tonight. Uh, this has been sure. absolutely a blast. Um, what do you got coming up? I have trips coming up. And, oh, uh, I have a uh, – I'll, I'll, I'll give you the code for people that are watching this live show. I have a code for 15% off at my, um, at my uh, online store. Oh, snap. Okay. And that's good. And that's going to be good. Yeah. I'll, I'll I'll send it to you today, uh, to, uh, today. And then, um, you can put it on the, uh, in the information below. We'll do that. That, that But no, I, I have, um, trips coming up in, um, in December here. And, um, hopefully the water, hopefully it, it warms up enough that, uh, you know, it's worth going out and chasing some smallmouth. I'm just hoping we get enough rain. Like, let's keep. This yeah, and, and then and if it doesn't rain and it gets real, real low and the water stays cold, like I said, that's that's a recipe for disaster. Mm -hmm. But luckily, uh, you have the Susquehanna too. So. Yeah, and uh, hey, if if the water is turns out real low, I, I know some people will still some people will still fish it um, on foot and they'll wear wa chest waders or something. They'll get in that cold water, uh, which is fine. Um. Don't be afraid in real low low water this time of year to fish the middle of the river mm. or the current. It's amazing how these fish will push out in the current, even in real cold water. Dude, that is yeah, a hundred percent. That that is a hundred percent. Don't you know, don't think outside the box. Don't look for um shoreline eddies and stuff if you got real low water. Jeff, thanks again for coming on the show. Again, I really sure. do appreciate it. He is the man, he's the legend. He runs the upper Potomac River basically. Um, please go out with him. He has a ton of openings this winter. This is the best time to catch your personal best. Go on out with him. Like, subscribe to the channel, and uh, we will see you guys next time on Fishing the DMV. You're listening to Fishing the DMV with your host, Thomas Ahrens. Fishing the DMV is brought to you by Jake's Bait and Tackle, located in Winchester, Virginia. If that doesn't get you jacked up, I don't know what will.